Could this be the best first focal plane scope value at the $600 price point? Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Athlon Optics Midas TAC 6-24 to by 50 rifle scope. Why am I so excited about this rifle scope? Well, when I think about a practical field shooting scenario or a PRS scenario, I'm thinking about some key features. HD quality glass, audible click turrets, positive mechanical zero stop, 24 power maximum magnification and first focal plane. This scope has all of those features and at about $600 street price, that represents an absolutely tremendous value. How will this scope live up to the specifications that I've read on paper? We're gonna find out in this video. We're gonna get the scope mounted, we're gonna take it out in the field and see exactly what it can do. So let's dig in. So let's see what's in the box. First off, this box is really good quality, really nice packaging. Here we have the scope, as we would expect. Nicely protected. It's got the foam end pieces, and it's got this bag to prevent any scratching. Looks really nice, okay. Awesome, okay. So in addition to the scope itself, we've got the lens cleaning cloth. We've got the instructions. I like to see in a specific instruction manual for a particular line of scope, Midas TAC, that's good. Got a little bit of supporting documentation, silica packet, and an Allen key for adjustment. Okay, so let's take a look at mounting the scope. Before I actually mount the scope, I like to assume sort of a prone shooting position behind the rifle. This enables me to move the scope fore aft over the mount or the rail so that I can get just the right eye relief dialed in. When I get just the right position for the scope, I note a reference position on the scope, the power ring in this case, and the rifle, the back of the Bikatini rail section in this particular case. Next, it's time to mount the ring bases. In this case, I'm using Vortex Precision Rings, the PMR series. I'm using 0.97 inch height here, which is the medium rings. These have done a great job for me on other rifles. What we wanna do is hold the scope over the rail or the mount in the same position where we found that optimal eye relief and then center the scope rings on the section of 30 millimeter tube that they're gonna clamp to. Now, we can tighten the clamps on the ring bases. What I like to do is hold the star bit in my hand so that I can quickly spin it. We get it finger tight, and then I'm using a Wheeler fat wrench in this particular case, set to the torque specification that Vortex specifies, which is 45 to 50 inch pounds. I used 48. Now that the ring bases are mounted, we can set the scope in the ring bases and then place the caps. A quick alternating finger tightening of the cap screws while maintaining even gaps on either side will get us dialed in so that we can level the scope. You can level the scope by eye or I like to use a bubble level. Find a reference point on the rifle and then the top of the elevation turret is another surface. Alternate between these two surfaces until they both agree level. Your scope is now level to the rifle. Now we can torque down the ring caps. In a crisscross pattern, I'm using, again, the Vortex specification for the ring caps. It's 18 inch pounds. Taking my time, alternating in that crisscross pattern, I get these scope rings torqued down perfectly. One final note, with some rings, it's suggested that you lap the rings so that they are in perfect alignment after they're clamped down. In this case, these Vortex Precision rings don't need that lapping. So, now that we've got the scope mounted, let's take it out in the field and see how it does. So here we are in the great outdoors, my favorite place to be and a great place to do some long range shooting. And with my custom Remington 700, 224 Valkyrie and the Athlon Midas Tac 6 to 24 by 50, I started out like you normally would at 100 yards sighting it in. And again, like I normally do, I look down the bore with the bolt out and then I look through the scope and then I click 
uh, my windage and my elevation until the two agree. That'll usually get you on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And then it's time to start shooting groups. I got the chronograph out. I'm really working with 224 Valkyrie to figure out what's gonna be that great long range load. And just this week, I also finished construction on my 600 yard range here at the Ultimate Reloader Outpost. So I can climb up the hill, I can prone out on a mat, I can shoot straight across the canyon at multiple steel targets. And I even added, I got this solar powered landscape lighting kit with two floodlights off of Amazon. And so now that automatically comes on at dusk and I can shoot in the dark which I've tried out from this spot. This is 400 yards to those steel targets. And I'll have to say, the feature set on this scope is really, really good. And the reticle is a little bit different than what I'm used to. I wanted mill dots so that I just have straight up mill dashes, but this reticle has a little gap right in the very middle where the crosshairs don't perfectly come together and there's a tiny dot in the middle. And what I found was it makes target acquisition a little bit easier and when you're shooting groups at 100 to evaluate a load or something like that it's really easy to really center up on those target spots let's take a look through the tube here here's what it looks like at 100 yards at 6 power and at 24 power now let's take a look at 600 yards again at 6 power and at 24 power let's go real far here here's what things look like at 1250 yards at six power and at 24 power. So I, I really like the reticle and if you're looking at a scope for something like long range hunting, long range target shooting or PRS, this scope is gonna be hard to beat for someone on a budget. Less than $600 in today's street prices. It's got the HD glass. It's got the zero stop, which I absolutely love. Last PRS match I did, I really wanted that. It's got the audible clicks which have been refined and improved. So if you're shooting a PRS stage and you're shooting at 200 and 400 and 800 yards, you can literally be working on acquiring the next target and clicking at the same time to dial your dope. And in that way, you're gonna be on target quicker. And with 90 second stages, with four or five different ranges and directions that you're shooting, that could be a complete game changer. So the zero stop, the power range is great for shooting out to 1,000 yards. The HD glass is awesome, and it's first focal plane. So regardless of what power you're at, you know your holdover is going to be accurate in terms of mills or MOA. So I really, really like this scope at this price point. Let me show you some of the ways that you can dial this in. Okay, so we're going to look at windage. We're going to look at elevation and setting the zero stop. So what's nice about this scope is it's got this cover, this cap over the windage knob because you know I like to use my reticle for windage holdover. But if you need to zero the windage dial, you're gonna just use a quarter or other coin or you can use a wide flat blade screwdriver. Cap comes right off and then you just very carefully look at the dash and your zero, line those up perfectly and then replace this screw okay just a little bit of torque doesn't take much so there's our windage adjustment now for elevation it's kind of the same thing you're just going to use a quarter or a wide flat blade screwdriver remove the screw and then pull straight up on the cap and this is the zero stop and to make that adjustment, you need to use a 1 16th inch Allen key. I'm using my Lyman set that has the 16th inch Allen key, but there is a smaller Allen key that's uh, included with the set, which is nice. Okay, and you're gonna loosen the three screws that are 120 degrees apart around kind of the, the circumference of this metal ring. And when you do that, you can lift their zero stop up and away. It comes kind of elevated out of position. And then when you get your zero set and you want to set the zero stop to that, you just set it down right against that little nub right there. And then you go ahead and, and tighten it down. Again, this doesn't take a whole lot here. <laughs> it's just a tiny set screw. 
and you're going to want to stop when you get kind of all three just snugged up. Okay, I think that will do. I'm going to replace my tip here. And we're going to go ahead and carefully lower the cap with the zero aligned with the reference mark. Snug that down. We're good to go. Let's do a quick test. Comes right back to zero. Perfect. So if you're looking for a scope with features well beyond its price category, take a look at the Athlon Midas Tac 6 to 24 by 50. This is just a great value. And make sure you're subscribed here on Gavin Tube because I'm going to have a lot more shooting stories that are going to put this scope through its paces. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.